Welcome to Canning Questions and Answers, Part 5. Liquid comes out of my jars when I pressure can. Is this normal? Yes, small amounts of, of your liquids coming out is perfectly normal. What you don't want to see are actual food particles. All right, one of the things that I, I struggle with, for example, is my chili. Uh, because it is very clumpy uh, food, you do risk parts and pieces of like meat or other parts of the beans getting up underneath that seal and it will not give you a good uh, pressure seal if too, min too much of that fluid comes out, too much of the food particles. But if you're canning, say for instance corn, you get a little bit of that liquid out and you notice that in your um, water bath canner or pressure canner, that's perfectly normal. You're going to see a little discoloration. What you don't want, like I said, is all your food to be gone, big particles floating around or anything like that. A little bit of siphoning is perfectly normal. Question two, can I just vacuum seal my jars instead of pressure canning or water bath canning? That depends on the food that you're discussing. Here I have onion powder. Onion powder is 100% safe to vacuum seal. A vacuum seal, they come looking similar to this right here. I've got my little vacuum sealer. It has an attachment to it. All you do is put it on, put it over, and hit vacuum, as long as you can hold it in place. So what it's doing is it's pulling out all of the air from this jar. When it's done, it shuts off. You can release this. Do your lift test. Now this is good for all kinds of things like sugars, rice, flour, um, certain dried herbs. Absolutely you can do that. Beautiful. Now if you're wanting to talk about vacuum sealing for things like chili or apples or carrots or peas, meat, Absolutely not. As we discussed in the previous uh, episode with botulism, the only way to kill a bacteria that causes uh, botulism is to have temperature and time. You have to have the temperature high and you have to have it for a certain amount of time in order for that bacteria to, to die. Now, if I were to take, I don't know, let's just say this can of chili and I were to pour it into a bowl and I leave it on my counter for a week, what do you think is going to happen? It's going to get gross. <laughs> it's going to start to stink. It's going to start to get fuzzy. And that is because that bacteria is alive and well. All right. So if I were to do the exact same thing and vacuum seal this, while the air is gone, the bacteria is still there. That bacteria is going to multiply and it's going to make me sick and possibly dead, depending on how long I have this sitting on my countertop. So, vacuum sealing is perfectly safe with dried goods, all right? And that includes freeze-dried food. That's fine. The moisture's been removed. It's been freeze-dried. It's, it's fine. But any kind of wet food, anything that you would leave out on your countertop for a week and it would go bad, you want a pressure can or water bath can it. How long after your jars are open do you have to consume the food? Well, it depends on the food. Think about your store-bought foods. When you open things like your jams or your jellies and you put them in the fridge, they're usually good for a month or two, right? It's the same process. So these have high acidity or high sugar levels, okay? So they tend to not go bad as fast. So your jams and your jellies or things of that nature, you've got a couple of, a couple of solid good weeks, if not months, depending on your refrigeration levels and what you put in your ingredients. Now when it comes to other foods like your meats, your corns, your peas, your beans, things of that nature, just think about it as if you brought them home and cooked dinner. It's cooked, it's ready to go. So you put them in your fridge and you have leftovers for what? One, two nights, right? So it's the same concept. Your, once you open it, you got about a week to get those major foods eaten. I really wouldn't go any longer than that. If I buy jars from the store with food already in them, can I reuse them? So this is a good example of tomato sauce. So it does have a lid that will seal down. I'm not going to open this right now, but typically jars like this will have a rubber seal in them. Now, can you use them? 
Rebel canners say absolutely yes. Reuse those things until they don't seal anymore. USDA advises against it, and that is because of something we've already covered. Once that jar is sealed, that lid is kind of specific to that jar, and you do risk not getting a good seal anymore because the seal has already been uh, impressioned by the lid. Now, or by the jar. Now, does that mean that I can specifically pressure can this lid with this jar again? Somebody asked me that. Well, if it's individual to that jar, can I just put that lid back on that jar? Well, again, it would have to sit exactly the same way. So the top of the lid couldn't be, if it's, you know, if you were to draw a line here and then screw it off, screw it back on, and your line is now here and over here, if that makes any sense. It's not lined up the same. But ideally, USDA standards say no, don't use these. Rebel canners say yes, do what you're comfortable with. I do not reuse these for this kind of canning. I will reuse these for my dry goods though. If someone gifts you canned food, how can you tell if they processed it correctly? Ask them. Ask them how they did it. Ask in an inquiring way, not, not a demanding, I need to make sure you did this right. Just ask them, hey, that's really cool. How do you do this? Listen to the story that they tell, and then you can decide whether or not you want to eat it. Now, somebody commented on one of my videos that they just put hot food in a hot jar, let it sit, and it seals. Yeah, it'll seal, definitely. It, it, if I were to take a gallon uh, that had hot water in it, and I put it outside in the snow right now, once it cools off, that air constricts inside, and it's going to seal. <laughs> it's the same way. You put hot stuff in a hot jar, and you let it cool. Yeah, it's going to lower that little little indent right here, and it's going to look sealed. But you didn't kill that bacteria. So be cautious. Ask people. If you're uncertain or they don't want to tell you, then yeah, that's a risk assessment you have to take if you ask them right away. Hey, when did you can this? And they're like, oh, just yesterday. You're fine. Eat it. Eat it right away. Don't put it on your shelf and let it sit if they're like, oh, yeah, I just hot stuff and hot jars and yeah, I just let it sit and it seals itself. <laughs> I wouldn't eat that. <laughs> I would avoid that at all costs. And with that, we are done with our questions for today. Again, if you have any more, leave them below, and I will continue to do this as long as you keep the questions coming. Thank you guys so much for watching everything, and I appreciate your support, and I hope that I am helping to educate and give you the encouragement that you need to begin canning. Thanks. Welcome to part five of canning questions and answers. Can I just know? I messed that one up. I'm looking at the wrong one. Welcome to Canning and Questions. Canning and Questions. What the fuck? <laughs>